Hi, this is Dr. Joel Wallach again. What I want to talk about now is plants. I just want to talk about plants, okay. the science of plants. And plants are phenomenal in that they take carbon dioxide from the air, they split off the oxygen, put the oxygen back out in the atmosphere. They take carbon dioxide and they use the sun's energy and the process known as photosynthesis using the chlorophyll of the plant as a catalyst to manufacture carbon chains. They take the carbon dioxide out of the air, split off the oxygen, put it out in the atmosphere, and take that carbon, and they make carbon chains, just like putting beads on a string. And all of our organic compounds come from these carbons in the air. If you look at a redwood tree, for instance, that weighs 50 tons, is 300 foot tall and 1,000 years old, 85% of that tree is the carbon that came out of the carbon dioxide in the air. The rest is the water and the minerals and so forth. But 85% of the weight of that tree came from the carbon in the air, and the plant was able to do that simply by the energy it derived from the sun using the process of photosynthesis. And the chlorophyll of the plant was the little factory that made this happen. And what a profound thing. What a unique thing. And certainly, as Jay pointed out in her first segment, there's no way we would have food there's no way we can have vitamins, amino acids, and fatty acids without plants. There's no way we could have oxygen without plants. And this is why plant life is so important to all living things on earth that they manufacture just about everything we need. Not totally, but just about everything we need will come from the plants. And so they're extremely important in our life. And the good Lord was very bright in putting plants here because without plants, there is no life. That's a very famous saying. I think a guy by the name of Jay Corey said that, without plants there is no life on earth, and that is quite correct. My own background is I went to the University of Missouri in 1958 and entered into the Department of Agriculture, and my interest in plants started out obviously on the farm, but in the University of Missouri, my first year, I took a course that was the agricultural chemistry class, agricultural biochemistry. And I learned that we could actually prevent birth defects by feeding certain nutrients that were produced by a plant. It was an essential nutrient called folic acid, which is very rich in green leafy plants, which Jay loves dearly. And the folic acid could prevent terrible birth defects where the brain was hanging out of the skull when the baby was born. It's called hydroencephalocele. The brain is inside the skull and yet filled with water, hydrocephalus, where the spinal cord is actually either missing or exposed because the vertebrae were not formed properly. This is known as spina bifida, and these are totally called neural tube defects. This could be almost totally prevented by the consumption of one B vitamin that came from plants, from spinach or cabbage or any green leafy plant called folic acid. And that was an awakening for me. That set me on the path to learn how to prevent and cure diseases from substances that were produced by plants. And my major was known as animal husbandry nutrition. I learned how to create diets for animals that were designed to increase production of milk and eggs and meat. I learned how to produce diets for animals that would extend life. I learned how to produce diets for animals that would increase fertility, survivability of babies, and also to prevent and cure diseases. And this was, again, an awakening for me and set me on my life path to where I actually intersected with Jay later on back in the 1970s at some of these health shows. And I have to tell you, that changed my life forever to see the fact that we could prevent and cure as many as 900 different diseases in animals and people with the substances that are produced by plants. And it was very difficult to get people outside of the agricultural community, especially the medical profession, interested in this because they had just come back from the Second World War. They had penicillin, they had sulfa drugs, tetracycline, streptomycin, and everything was antibiotics at that point, and they didn't want to listen to the value of the substances that were produced by plants. And so that's how Jay Cordish and I intersected. That was my introduction to the wonderful things that plants can do for us. Plants do put their roots down into the earth, and they actually will pull up minerals out of the earth for their needs, but plants do not make minerals. That's the one thing that plants cannot make. Plants cannot make minerals. They can take substances from the atmosphere and make water vapor. They actually not only put oxygen in the air, but they put water vapor into the air. But plants cannot make minerals. That's one of the limiting factors in the juices 
in that the minerals on Earth do not occur in a uniform blanket around the crust of the Earth. They occur in veins like chocolate and chocolate ripple ice cream. They occur in veins like gold and silver. And even in a farmer's field, row number one might have 22 minerals in it. Row number five might have 18. Row number 10 might have 32. Row number 15 might have three. Row number 20 might have zero. Row number 25 might have 60. Row number 30 might have 28. And row number 35 might have zero. So it was kind of a chance when you would wake up in the morning and eat your whole grain breads, whether or not you were going to get all your minerals. Now, if you ate right, you could get a significant amount of vitamins, amino acids, and fatty acids. And this is long before my introduction of juicing. And this is what I learned. Now, we go back into history and we find out from the beginning of time that plants only need about 13 minerals to be happy and healthy. Plants require 13 minerals to be healthy and happy. But farmers don't get paid for how many minerals are in a plant. And so farmers are going to put in the minimum amount of minerals because they're expensive to give them the maximum yields in terms of tons and bushels per acre. Now, they came up with a fertilizer in the 1700s. And I'm sure you heard this, Jay, NPK. Mm -hmm. NPK. Mm -hmm. yep. And it gives the farmer the maximum yields in terms of tons and bushels per acre, but the seeds from those plants won't grow more plants. So they're always having to buy new seed every year when they use that fertilizer, and they've turned it into an economical event that they have to buy new seed because plants that you only feed three minerals to are not healthy enough to produce a second generation. Well, if they're not healthy enough to produce a second generation, they're certainly not healthy enough to produce a second generation from the mineral standpoint of people, our animals. And so how did we do well from the beginning of time? How did we do well 8,000 years B.C. when people were eating plants to supplement their diets and then they became a very important part of their diets? How did people fertilize these plants? Well, they did it with wood ashes. They did it with wood ashes, and every little farm boy knows, or every little farm girl, you take the wood ashes from the wood stove, and you put those wood ashes out into the garden, and the plants where the roots down deep in the soil will take up whatever minerals are in the soil, and the plants will actually take up whatever minerals are in the soil. Now, if that beet or that root of that tomato plant is sitting in a row that only has five minerals in it, if you're putting in wood ashes, and the wood ashes have... 32 minerals in there or 50 minerals or 60 minerals in there, the plant will take them all up. The plant will be healthier. You eat that green pepper. You eat that tomato. You eat that green bean. You eat that okra. And you're going to have a very nutritious food. But when you eat foods today that are grown on 10,000 acres of wheat fields, does that whole wheat wheat berry have in it all the minerals that a human being needs? And the answer is no. So the things that we're eating today are not the same as what we were eating, our parents were eating 50 years ago, 75 years ago, our grandparents 50 and 75 and 100 years ago. It is not the same. A tomato today is not the same as it was 50 or 100 or 200 years ago or 1,000 years ago because we use electricity and natural gas and propane and kerosene and heating oil and liquid paraffins as fuels, and there's no wood ashes left over. In fact, this change actually took place and here's a specific one for you, Jay. Three o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4th, 1882 is when everything changed. Three o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4th, 1882. What happened? What happened? <laughs> That's one of my favorite dates. That's when Thomas Edison and his chief electrical technician pulled the switch and turned on the first commercial electric generating plant yeah. in the world. Yeah. And that changed everything. And by 1950, when you and I came along, there was no great gathering of doctors wringing their hands saying, oh, wait a minute, for thousands of years, people have been using these wood ashes as a source of mineral fertilizer for our food plants. And those are gone now. People had completely given up wood ashes as a fertilizer. Actually, by 1909, there was no less than a dozen patented kitchen electrical appliances, one of which yeah. was a blender, yeah. very close to yeah. a juicer. 1909 yeah. was the first patent. We found it in the Sears catalog in 1909. There was a electrical steam iron, electrical toaster, electrical skillet, electrical crock pot, electrical rice cooker, electrical stove, electrical icebox. And by 1950, nobody used wood anymore in any urban setting in small towns and big cities only out in the hinterlands, only out in the farms. Well, in the cities, things began to change. We have epidemics of diseases today, like obesity, 
and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later. But obesity, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, all these diseases that you knew, Jay, you knew years and years and years ago, 50 years ago, you knew because you personally experienced it, that by juicing, you could in fact reverse these diseases. I'm just gonna grab, and you have these copies here. Oh yeah, yeah. This is a picture of a Time Magazine cover from 1992. And I'm sure that you had to be the inspiration for this. We were on a roll. You were on a roll in 1992. It says, Time Magazine, 1992, the real power of vitamins. New research shows they may help fight cancer, heart disease, and the ravages of aging. Because of all your inspirational work, the actual academic community was delving into this. Now, they'd known about vitamins for 100 years, but they sort of relegated them to the fact that, oh, you just eat well, you get everything you need. Sure. And, of course, you and I know better than that. And I have actually another piece here, which I think I want your comment on. Okay. And this is actually from one of your favorite magazines, Mother Earth News, uh-huh. in June of 2004. And there's a couple of things here. We're going to go back to 1992, which they quote here is the USDA report, United States Department of Agriculture report. It says, the USDA estimates the following potential health benefits if everyone in the United States could be convinced to eat a diet containing the recommended daily amounts of primary nutrients Okay, we could reduce cancer by 20%. I think Mm -hmm. it's much higher than that. Much higher than that, absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. There's much higher than 20%. But that's the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They're Mm -hmm. saying it could be reduced by 20%. They're conservative. They're conservative. Then they said we could reduce heart and vascular diseases by 25%. I think it's much higher than that. Mm -hmm. And we could reduce arthritis by 50%. We could reduce respiratory diseases, I'm assuming like asthma and chronic obstructive Mm -hmm. pulmonary disease, Mm -hmm. emphysema, and infectious diseases by 20%. We could reduce by 50% infant and maternal deaths if people would just take in all the known essential nutrients. Now, what they did in the same issue was take the USDA nutrient database, and they took some very interesting stuff here, and they compared the values of nutrients in various foods and vegetables and fruits and grains Mm -hmm. and eggs, for instance. Mm -hmm. And they looked at it and they say, what has changed between 1975 and 2004? So let's look at the USDA nutrient database for eggs. Let's look at eggs, Mm -hmm. a great American food, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, between 1975 and 2004, the amount of calcium in the egg itself went down by 2%, Hmm. minus 2%, not significant. Iron went down by 20%, that is significant. Mm -hmm. Phosphorus went down in eggs by 7%. And vitamin A went down in eggs by 59%. And you see this all the time. Mm -hmm. And a chicken that's running around out in the field, he's got a bright orange yolk, Mm -hmm. very dark orange Mm -hmm. yolk, and it's got plenty of beta carotene in there. Well, Joel, you have a lot of experience with animal husbandry and all that, so you know this could affect those animals like that. What could it do to us? You got it. And vitamin A went down by 59%. That's why the yolks on eggs where chickens are held in these cages and there's not much beta carotene, not much vitamin A in mm-hmm. it anymore, right? right? Okay, let's look at wheat germ, a favorite food of vegetarians and vegans, right? Wheat germ. Uh, between 1975 and 2004, the calcium went down by 22%. Iron went down by 24%. Phosphorus went down by 24%. Mm-hmm. Potassium went down by 6%. And riboflavin went down by 38%. 38%, right. Thiamine did go up by 5%, went up 5%. And niacin went up by... 36%. Yeah. But as far as all the minerals, they went down and riboflavin did go down by 38%. That's spectacular. Okay, calcium. Let's look at calcium as an individual nutrient, very important nutrient for animals and humans. Between 75 and 04, we can talk like that. It's like the old days during Starm in 04, right? Between 75 and 04, calcium went down in apples by 14%, went down in blueberries by 60%, mm-hmm. went down in onions by 18%, went down in tomatoes by 11%, went down in green beans by 33%, went down in corn by 33%, went down in peas by 4%, went down in broccoli by 54%, went down in kale by 46%, and went down in strawberries by 24%. Because farmers are only putting in NPK. Sure, I know. They're not putting in calcium for the yeah. most part. Let's look at iron, another very important mineral for human beings and animals. That's for your hemoglobin, of Hem- course. You got it. Yeah. It's essential for the hemoglobin, for making red blood cells, for energy. It's important for the myoglobin, the red pigment in our sure. muscles, so your muscles can use oxygen. It went down in apples by 60%. went down in blueberries by 72%. Yeah. 
went down on onions by 62%, went down on tomatoes by 10%, went down on carrots by 57%, went down on spinach by 13%, went down on corn by 26%, went down on peas by 23%, went down on broccoli by 33%, went down on kale by 37%, went down on strawberries by 58%. And you're attributing that to what? To lack of nutrients well, in the soil? Yeah, because people aren't using the wood ashes as the source of yeah, minerals anymore as yeah, fertilizer. Yeah. They're only using NPK. Yeah. yeah. And there's you no know, iron in you, NPK. You know what I do, Joe? Mm-hmm. You know what? To enrich the soil where I live. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of orange trees back there and tangerines and everything. I take the pulp that's left over in the bucket of my juicer and I dig trenches and I bury it. I bury it and I cover it up with dirt and let it work its way yeah. through there. It's the next great thing, compost, you, yeah, isn't it? great compost. Next thing you know, I have fertilizing worms. They're all over the place and they're creeping around there and fertilizing it. And I have the richest food in the world. I mean, my plants, my fruit trees are absolutely 100%. They're happy. They're happy. And they're producing it for us, for Linda and myself and John and Jason, my two sons. Well, since you brought that up, I have to tell you my wife's pomegranate tree story. It's my favorite fruit, by the way. It's in season. <laughs> yeah, oh, we love uh, it. Yeah. And, and we moved into this house about four years ago now, and it has like 12 different species of fruit trees. One of them is a pomegranate. It's right out in front. And this tree is about, I'd say, a good... I don't know, 20 inches in diameter, so obviously 25, 30 year old tree. At the roots. At the base, yeah. yeah. And we were so excited. You know, they told us what each one of them was. And so we were really looking forward in the late summer and fall to get the pomegranates. And the flowers were falling off. They get a lot of flowers, thousands of flowers, but they would fall off. And so I knew, well, there's not going to be a flower on that tip of that branch. Yeah, right here. Yeah. And we wound up our total harvest that first year we'd moved into the house was three pomegranates the size of a lemon. Yep. Okay? Yeah. And so my wife says, okay, don't tell me. I know we need to fertilize the tree. So what she did was take some organic humic shale, took organic humic shale, Mm -hmm. and took a tablespoon and put it in each of 25 quart bottles of water and shook it up. Opened up, had those little pop tops, took a trowel and dug 25 holes around that tree out at the outer reaches of its limbs. Poured it, it in you there. Poured it in there and just left it sit there and slowly percolate down into the soil. Well, the next year, we had thousands of flowers, didn't lose a one, and she wound up with 300 pomegranates the size of grapefruit. That's terrific. Now, That's... she did it again the next year. Yeah. Wound up with 1,000 pomegranates on that same little tree the size of grapefruit. Now, she has been juicing that. I mean, the place looks like a slaughterhouse. There yeah. is pomegranate juice all over our yeah. kitchen, which is white tile. Yeah. And we have freezers and freezers and freezers full of the pomegranate juice. I want to go next to vitamins. Plants produce all vitamins. Sure. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But plants can only produce the maximum amount of vitamins they can produce if they're well nourished from a standpoint of minerals to mm-hmm. make the maximum mm-hmm. amount of, of vitamins, phytonutrients, the antioxidants, because they're all carbon compounds, which the plant gets from the carbon sure. dioxide in sure. the air, right? Yeah. You've been saying this for and 50 years. And solar energy, you know? Yep. Solar energy, photosynthesis, photosynthesis. The, right? The, That's what happens. Yeah. What we do, we take the pulp from our juicer. Yep. And we add the organic humate Humus. granules to it, yeah. the humic acid, yes, which is right. the, the organic plant minerals. And we mix the organic plant minerals, the humic shale, with the pulp from the juicer. Well, those minerals are indispensable because they're from that humic shale of, of how many, 500,000 years ago and whatever, you know? From the beginning of time. Beginning of time. The beginning of time. That's and. Right. It's actually an ancient compost pile is what humic shale is. You get a misimpression. You think, oh, it's shale. You think it's layers of rock. No. But it's not. It's actually an ancient compost pile. If you take pieces of it, you can take a piece the size of a bushel basket and lift it in your hand like balsa wood, and you just smash it by squeezing your hand or clapping your hands together, and it looks like coffee grounds. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I sent some home with Linda the other day. It looks like yeah. coffee grounds. Do you know I was in those mines? Yeah. Maybe 20 years ago or 15 years ago. It was phenomenal. I love to go there two, three times a year. Yeah, you do, And I just go in there and I just sit and just take in everything around me because you can imagine those trees from before written history because God made the plants first before he made us because he knew we needed the oxygen. Absolutely. Now, plants make vitamins. Everybody knows that. Plants can make the vitamins, amino acids, fatty acids, omega-3s, omega-6s. Plants make the phytonutrients and the antioxidants. But they can only do that in a optimal way when they're nourished with minerals. So exactly. knowing that the minerals are all down, it's not too unreasonable to, without even looking, you know that the vitamins are going to be down between 1975 and 2004. So let's look at vitamin A. One of the more simple vitamins comes as beta-carotene. We cleave 
the beta carotene in half, and it makes two units of vitamin A. So let's look at apples. Between 1975 and 2004, the amount of vitamin A in apples has gone down by 40%. Blueberries has gone down by 46%. Onions has gone down by 95%, Jay. This is the USDA measurements. Tomatoes have gone down by 31%. Corn has gone down by 400%. And Joel, that's because of depletion of soils, right? Yes. That's exactly what I... Because the plants heard. want to make those vitamins, yeah. but they can't without the raw materials, but without so, the cofactors so they're and minerals. They're you know, stunted. They, yeah, that's right. It's amazing. That's amazing. why they can't make good seed. They have to keep getting new yeah. seed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, corn is down by 400%. Broccoli is down by 74%. We're talking about vitamin A yeah. in these yeah. foods. And strawberries, the vitamin A is down by 80%. Boy, that's something, isn't it? Now let's look at vitamin C. Between 1975 and 2004, vitamin C is down in blueberries by 31%, down in onions by 36%, Mm. down in carrots by 26%, down in potatoes by 43%, down in green beans by 14%, down in spinach, my wife's favorite, and I know your favorite, is by 45%. Vitamin C is down by 45% in spinach, down by 44% in corn, down by 21% in broccoli, down by 35% in kale. And so... Because the farmers aren't putting stuff back in, right? NPK is all they're putting in. Yeah. NPK. No wonder. Yep. And so that's our problem. So even when you buy something that you think is going to help you, it doesn't. That's right. Well, it will, but only a little bit. It's not going to help you like it did in the days when you and I were kids. Yeah. Well, the general public is very interested in whole foods. They're very interested in juices now. That's right. And the interest in juices goes back to a guy by the name of Jay Cornish. I mean, you're the guy who... Actually introduced the we world. We were the Johnny Appleseeds that went around <laughs> all over the country. I remember those days. Doctors are going to tell us, Jay, that there's no evidence to support a claim that you can prevent and cure diseases with plants and plant mm. juices and yeah. vitamins and minerals you get out of plants. And you and I know better. That's erroneous. That, that's an erroneous yeah, belief, yeah, that's right? That's right. That's right. And I find it kind of interesting that doctors in America only live, this is their own research now, they only live to be 56. Right. And they die of cancer heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Is that an average, 56? 56. Oh. That's their publication, their research. I yeah. said 58, and they didn't like that, so they did their own <laughs> research, and they came out with 56, yeah. so I, I missed it by two years. Yeah. Let's look at some specifics. Now, okay. This is where you and I are going to get in some specifics. Doctors poo-poo this stuff, and I like the way you said, why would we listen to somebody who dies at 56? Yeah. Yeah. I want to listen to somebody who dies over 100, yeah. right? Okay, let's look at vitamin C. Now, doctors say there's no evidence to support a claim that vitamins or minerals plant juices can prevent or cure anything. So vitamin C is a classic vitamin that comes from plants. Plants make it. Sure. Okay, they take the carbon dioxide out of the air. Vitamin C is nothing but a carbon chain, yeah. right? And so you and I both know you can prevent and cure disease with vitamin C. Well, look at the people that were on the old time sailing vessels, right? What was the thing that kept them on long voyages across the Atlantic or the Pacific or wherever around Cape Horn or whatever? What was the remedy that they used they took along all kinds of lemons and oranges and grapefruit and limes. And we used to call the English sailors limeys, remember? <laughs> that <laughs> limeys? Reason, that's Why? right. Because that's what they used. They incorporated that. They found out that would prevent scurvy, scurvy. and all the rest of the diseases when you don't have an adequate diet. You see? Now, see, now the doctors are lying there, aren't they? I think they so. Say, There's nothing in fruits and vegetables that will prevent or cure diseases. Yeah. So we know that vitamin C, which is produced only by plants, you and I cannot make vitamin C. It's true. Now, there's some animals that can. Yeah. Animals can make vitamin C, but you and I can't. Human beings, guinea pigs, and primates, monkeys, cannot make vitamin C. We have to eat it every day. It's a water-soluble vitamin. We don't store it very well. Nope. And so this is where juicing comes in. This is where eating lots of green leafy vegetables comes in. Absolutely. Because plants make it from the carbon dioxide out of the air. The plant strings those carbon atoms on a chain, just like putting yeah, molecules, just like putting beads on a string, and make vitamin C. Now, vitamin C, as you point out, Jay, will prevent and cure scurvy, will support the body's desire to manufacture collagen, which is the bone matrix that you lay minerals on. Right. So without vitamin C, you're going to wind up, even if you're taking in plenty of calcium, without vitamin C, you'll wind up with osteoporosis and arthritis. Well, vitamin C basically, quote unquote, very simply put, it's your anti-virus, anti-disease, anti-infection vitamin. Vitamin C. How can Duh. you lose? Yeah, can you lose? Uh, <laughs> Duh. Okay. See, and you're exactly a... right. How many of you have heard of people who say, oh, my adrenals are weak? Mm. Well, how much vitamin C are they getting, yeah. right? Very little. Yeah. Yeah. Healing. If you want wound healing, you better be taking in extra vitamin C. 
What better way than juicing? That's right. It builds the vascular walls around your heart and prevents different kinds of infections. All connective tissue, That's right. All connective tissue, including the connective tissue and arteries. Mm -hmm. Our good friend Linus Pauling was a big vitamin C fan. He was the man that made it visible. And when you have a guy who has two unshared Nobel Prizes thinking about vitamin C as an important nutrient, he actually got his Nobel Prize for enzyme physiology and the Peace Prize. That's right. He didn't get a Nobel Prize for vitamin C, but he spent, in his last years of his life, he focused his entire public attention to vitamin C. That's how much he realized that it was important to human health. First of all, we always just give it a label. It's your anti-infection vitamin. That's the way I always think of it, sure. Call the shot the way it should be. Okay, let's go to vitamin A. Now, plants make vitamin A. You and I can't make vitamin A. There's no animal that can make vitamin A. Although the four stomach animals like cows and goats and sheep and giraffe and buffalo have the four stomachs. Now, all the little animals that are in their fourth stomach Mm -hmm. can take the beta carotene. Yeah, yeah, and they take that beta carotene. They make vitamin A from it. Mm -hmm. And then the cow swallows the bacteria and gets the vitamin A that way, right? But I don't worry about those animals. I worry about you and me and the people out there (laughs) listening to us. We're the ones that want to know. Yeah, well, vitamin A is a great healing vitamin. It's required for healing. It's also required for night blindness. Night blindness, it's a classic. Absolutely, absolutely. If you can't see at night, you go to an eye doctor, he says, well, I don't see anything wrong with you, but I can't see at night. You better up your vitamin A. And if you don't want to pop pills, what you do is you take juice yeah. from the yellow vegetables, right? That's right. And Carrots, the green, and the greens. green too. Oh sure. yeah, spinach is a great oh. source of beta carotene vitamin A. Even the broccoli and, and Brussels sprouts. Okay, so anyway, prevents and reverses infertility. I've gotten more women pregnant than any other man in history. <laughs> I like to say that. My wife says, with nutrition, with nutrition. With nutrition, yeah. yeah. And so really... A, I can't say that because I <laughs> clubbed in the head right now, you know. <laughs> I think you've probably helped a lot of women with infertility yeah. with your oh, juices. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We health. helped a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and preventing, what you do. That's preventing what you birth do. defects. Vitamin A is a big one. Vitamin A deficiency results in all kinds of birth defects including structures of the limbs and the hands and the feet and the legs and so on. Heart defects can be caused by vitamin A deficiency. Incomplete separation. You're building your epithelial cells, too. Exactly. That's exactly what You're bringing them up to 100% factor for life You reduce the risk of cancer in epithelial cells with vitamin A and beta carotene. That's right. So any doctor who says, well, you just have to eat well, you get all the vitamin C, vitamin A you need. Well, we just learned from the USDA database comparing 75 to 04. Oh, yeah, we just read that, yeah. That you might not be able to do that. You might not be able to do that. I have to tell you a story here. I'll take a little break here. This happened about three years ago. I had worn the same eyeglasses prescription for 60 years. Mm -hmm. For 60 years, I wore the same eyeglasses prescription. And I started taking a dried multiple juice product. It was juices of 11 vegetables and 10 fruit. Right. Took these dried... Encapsulated. Encapsulated, yeah. Took these dried fruits and vegetable juices... And in about six weeks, my vision just went blurry. My wife had to drive me to the eye doctor. I, I just was, I said, oh my God, what did I do to myself this time? Because whatever it said, I took like four times what yeah, it said. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I got to the eye doctor and he says, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this can't be true. And I said, well, is it that bad? He said, well, I got to rerun everything because this is so outrageous. I can't believe it. And so I said, well, you just want to run that, so I'll, I'll have to pay you double. He said, no, no, I'll pay for the test. He said, I got to rerun this. So he ran it and came back and he said, no, no, it's, it's correct. And he said, well, what is it? He says, your eyes have improved 45%. Already. And the reason why your vision went blurry was now your prescription is way too strong. i got to cut your prescription by 45%. Yeah, exactly. That's the way you go. <laughs> That's the way the vision goes, yeah. you know? And that was just taking these dried juices from 11 vegetables and 10 fruits in encapsulated form. Yeah. I mean, what a demonstration. What a demonstration. Just six weeks. Yeah. And I had the same prescription for 60 years. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I do a lot of that, Joe. When I'm on the road and I can't use my juicer, I have some capsules and I take them with me. They're juice encapsulated. It's really powdered form and it's really great. Yeah. You have to have something for those special occasions, for those emergencies. That's right. You'll look funny carrying your juicer around all the time. Yeah, I take it with me wherever I go, but it's still, when you're on a plane or you're Mm -hmm. in a limo or They won't let you take a juicer on the plane. You're going to plug it in. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Let's look at folic acid. Prevents and cures anemia. Yeah. Now, there's a serious disease. I get a lot of people, Jay, they say, well, I've been anemic for 23 years, and I've been on iron for 23 years. And I'll say, well, dear, you're not iron deficient. If you've been taking iron for 23 years and you're still anemic, I'll bet 
It's a folic acid deficiency. Yeah. And we give them juices, and guess what? One of the B complexes. Yeah. Folic acid, B complex, right, right out of spinach, right out of all the green leafy vegetables, your yeah. favorite. Endive, yeah. broccoli, all that stuff. Yeah. The folates green are onions, there. The, the folates, folates are there. Yeah, just, and within days, they call me. So you can't believe the energy I've got. Yeah. They say, well, go ahead and get your test. And sure enough, they're not anemic anymore. After 23 years of anemia, the doctor's giving them nothing but iron, iron, iron. Nothing's happening. You give them a little bit of folic acid, and within three days to a week, bam, the anemia is gone. Joel, those greens are ever so powerful. For instance, how many people have I met in all my years of demonstrating, 60 years? Oh, how millions. many? Yeah, millions. How many people have I met? And there are people that have ulcers of all kinds, you know, hemorrhaging ulcers, duodenal ulcers, peptic ulcers, all kinds. At Stanford University Medical School, Dr. Garnett Cheney, medical doctor practicing at Stanford University in Palo Alto, but he would go up and give every ulcerated prisoner, and you know, when you're incarcerated like that, and you've got a lot of family, stress. oh, stress and worry, and you can't go out and do what you want to do, you're in jail, you're locked forever, seemingly, and you develop this ulcer, the worry, the anxiety, the stress of being like that. Well, what he did, he found that freshly made cabbage juice had something he labeled acid glutamine, which converts to hyperic acid, and he went there and made freshly made cabbages for every prisoner that had ulcers. And within two to five days, all the symptoms of an ulcer were gone. And they were drinking about three to four to five glasses of cabbage juice a day. Now, some of them couldn't drink straight cabbage. They drink and they regurgitate. So he made a combination for them, those that couldn't stomach the straight cabbage. Cabbage, carrot, celery, which he labeled the three C's. Every single stomach ulcer patient was cured. About 90% of them were cured within two to five days. The rest of them took two to three more weeks. Was that the famous cabbage cure for ulcers? Cabbage cure for ulcers by yeah. Dr. Garnett Cheney. I'm giving you a name now. Dr. That's Garnett funny. Cheney, Stanford University Medical School. After that, nobody ever talks. No medical <laughs> profession ever talks about ulcers because they know cabbage juice will cure it. Cabbage juice cures stomach ulcers. Isn't it amazing? Something That's, simple like that. Well, we've got more to come on that one. But let me tell you, cabbage juice, I mean, this is one of the first ones I learned from my grandmother. If you have an upset stomach, you have gastritis, your stomach is irritated, you got reflux and all that kind of stuff, yeah. she used to make cabbage soup for us. Did she? Yeah. 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 Just yeah. cabbage soup. And I love cabbage soup. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than cabbage soup. Cabbage is a real healer. And by the way, it'll help rid the body of parasites and worms that a lot of people have because of faulty eating habits. Sure. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. When you really get down to the nitty gritty of staying healthy, you have to go one way. And Joel, the one way that I was blessed to find out about and save my life, you have to go the way of God's foods. The juice cure. Man, the God's foods are plants. They're plants. They were on this well, who planet made, Earth. Who made plants, Jay? God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's another one, the grape cure. Oh, yeah. You've heard of the grape cure? Yeah. You remember who wrote that? Johanna Brandt, one of the great books of all time. And she talks about heart disease and different ailments of the human body. And by the way, that book was specifically on one specific type of grape, and that was the Concord grape. Concord grape, yes. Fabulous, the, huh? You the, remember the that? dark blue, the dark yeah, black yeah, grapes. Yeah, dark oh. black grapes. Mm -hmm. And oh boy, and are the they seeds. a seed? You can hear those seeds when you push them through that juicer. And by the way, that's the reason for having your own juice machine. You be the cannery. Well, see, Jay, you've known this for over 50 years Sure. Johanna Brandt, yeah. she knew that the grape cure worked for That's cancer. Right. She That's knew right. that it unclogged and prevented clogging of arteries. That's right. And everybody poo-pooed her. Yeah. All the doctors said, oh, that's quackery. That's yeah. not true. Mm -hmm. But now, in the last five years, they've discovered a couple of substances in the skin of the Concord grapes and the dark blue mm -hmm. and the purple grapes, the black grapes, and in the seeds of grapes. Mm -hmm. They've discovered two substances. One's called proanthocyanins, mm -hmm. and the other one is resveratrol. Okay. And they can take these purified substances and reverse coronary artery disease. Isn't it amazing? They can prevent cancer sure. in laboratory animals sure. because mm -hmm. Johanna Brandt was correct. Yeah. Now, she didn't know... She didn't know the names of them, yeah. the chemical term for it, but she knew there were substances in there that would reduce the clogging of the arterial walls and everything else. She knew that. Well, yeah, she knew yeah. that. And, and the cancer cure. I mean, yeah. the grape cure for the cancer. The grape cure. Yeah. It's it, one of the old-time books out there, and it's still a prolific book because the healing properties that Concord grapes have 
hasn't changed. That's right. It's still the same. Just because people didn't know the name of the substance <laughs> didn't mean anything, right? From 1889 <laughs> to 1920 yeah. to 1940, there it's you go. It's still true. You can't change Kinda that. Kind of like the Bible, it's still yeah, true. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, I got another one of my favorites. I'm sure it's your favorite too, Jay, because it has to do with green leafy vegetables. Okay. You ever heard of vitamin K? Oh, yeah. For clotting the blood properly. Yeah, you'll bleed to death if you don't have vitamin <laughs> That's K. That's right. And it's found in green leafy vegetables, very mm -hmm. high in spinach, right? That's right. When a doctor gives you a blood thinner, he says, don't eat green leafy vegetables. Yeah. What a silly thing to yeah, say to yeah, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's such great stuff in the spinach, of course, oh. has the vitamin K, but it also... People forget what makes green things green. We haven't discussed that yet, but this is probably a good part to stick this in because we're talking about vitamin sure, K. Sure, sure. What makes green leafy things green? And I'm sure you know this, but I'm going to kind of give a little outline yeah, yeah, here and it. then you can throw in. Sure. And basically, it's the magnesium mm -hmm. that makes it green. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at chlorophyll, when you look at the chemical structure of chlorophyll, the chemical structure of chlorophyll is an identical double ring carbon structure exactly like human hemoglobin. Human, the red blood cells. Yeah. The only difference between human hemoglobin and plant chlorophyll is that in hemoglobin, there's an iron in the middle mm -hmm. with hemoglobin, mm -hmm. and in plants, that same double ring, mm -hmm. almost identical, there's a magnesium in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, back to vitamin K. What is it now that every hospital, every time a baby's born in a hospital, they give them a shot of what? Vitamin K. Vitamin K. It stops yeah. them from bleeding to death. Yeah. If the mother didn't eat enough green leafy vegetables, she doesn't have enough vitamin K yeah. to pass on to the baby. And many babies would bleed to death. They were born normal, and when they cut the umbilical cord, they'd bleed to death. Why, if you can't prevent and cure diseases, and certainly bleeding to death is a disease because you're deficient sure in vitamin sure K, is. Yeah. that every baby that's born in a hospital today, all across the industrialized world, every baby gets an injection of vitamin K. And so vitamin K is important. And again, you can get that from the juices because it comes from the green leafy plants. Okay, here's another one for you. This is another one of your favorites because I heard you talking about it on your DVD. Omega-3s, the essential fatty acids made by plants, flaxseed oil, borage oil, mm -hmm. evening primrose oil. Mm -hmm. Omega-3, also known as vitamin F. Vitamin F, it was originally called. They thought it was a vitamin. Yeah. They are going to class it as vitamin. In some reason, they put it into the essential Fatty, fatty acids, acids. Yeah, yeah, instead of a vitamin. But originally yeah. it was called vitamin F. Yeah. Because they knew it was a fatty substance. Yeah, and you know what we called it? Unsaturated fatty acids. There you go. Unsaturated fatty acids. It was a chemical That's description, vitamin, right. vitamin F. Right. Now, omega-3, and this is something that I have actually sued the FDA on. You have? Yeah, I've sued the FDA over the omega-3 thing. Sure. So that every company, not just my company, but every company can say, this product contains omega-3 fatty mm -hmm. acids. Mm -hmm which have been shown to reduce the risk of stroke and coronary artery thrombosis and heart attack. And before we sued them to get that information, you couldn't do it legally. You couldn't say that yeah. on a product label. They rejected or, that it, information. Well, they'd put you in jail. Yeah. Okay. So we had to fight in courts to get it done, and we did. Now, I think that's pretty exciting, and we were very happy to do that. Also, omega-3s, if pregnant women take omega-3 oils from the flaxseed oil and from sure. the borage oil, evening primrose oil, it will actually increase the IQ of the baby. Wow. The baby's IQ will go up as much as 10 to 12 to 15 points if they supplement with the omega-3s during wow, pregnancy. that's so great. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's amazing. Also, there's a fraction in the omega-3s, there's an ester in there something that actually is analgesic, relieves pain mm -hmm. and relieves inflammation, and so it helps prevent the oxidation of the LDLs, the low-density lipoproteins, which is the yeah, bad cholesterol, yeah, yeah. and it protects it. Now, the low-density lipoproteins, the LDL, the bad cholesterol, is actually the same cholesterol as the good cholesterol. As the HDL. Yeah, HDL, yeah, high-density yeah, lipoproteins. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a paint. When you paint a house, you use the same batch number of paint, and it's always the west side of the house that blisters and powders and flakes first because of the intensity of the sun on the west side of the house as it sets. The morning sun is not that intense, but it's the same batch of paint. Same thing with the bad cholesterol and the good cholesterol. The bad cholesterol is just good cholesterol that's been damaged yeah. by free radicals, trans fatty acids, free radicals, heterocyclic amines, free radicals, and so on. And so the omega-3s protect against that damage to the good cholesterol so it won't become the so bad cholesterol. So what do we consider foods that have the good cholesterol? What are the main foods that we have to Oh, the, that have good cholesterol? Yeah. 
Good cholesterol is found in eggs. The HDL. Yeah, yeah. Does a vegetarian have a hard time getting... A, a vegan will have a hard time yeah. getting good cholesterol. Yeah. And they do tend to get dementias. I've seen a lot of people who are psychotic who are vegans, yeah. who are pure vegans. Yeah. But if they'll eat a little bit of eggs once in a while, they eat a little bit of dairy products once in a while. Shellfish. Uh, shellfish, shellfish is good. Yeah. Yeah. Things like shrimp and yeah, lobster yeah, and yeah, clams yeah, and yeah. those oysters, those kind of things. And Mussels, things like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Things like chicken skin, chicken yeah. skin, throw now, the chicken if, away. If they're vegetarians like I am, mm -hmm. then you have to get it from a supplemental source, right? Exactly. Exactly. You have to that's, get it from a supplemental yeah, source. Yeah, that's And you can get do. it from all organic plants. Yeah, yeah. And you can, that's the ones we like is the organic omega-3 that comes from the organic sources yeah. certified, and we love those. Yeah. And you can supplement with them. You do have to supplement, since you brought this subject up, you do have to supplement with the omega-3s. You do have to supplement with the minerals because it's kind of a throw of the dice which minerals are going to be in the plants, yeah, sure. how much are in there now yeah. compared to 50 years ago. Okay, let's look at some more nutrients here. And you mentioned many, many times the B vitamins, B1, B2, mm -hmm. B3, mm -hmm. B5, B6, mm -hmm. folic acid. And then B12. B12. Yeah. B12 is one you also have to supplement with. It's very, yeah, difficult, yeah, very difficult to get for a yeah, vegan yeah, to yeah, do that. Yeah. And, you know, there's all kinds of vegetarians. Yeah. Vegetarians are not necessarily a vegan, but all vegans are vegetarians, yeah. but not all yeah. vegetarians are vegans. Yeah. For instance, if you eat eggs and then only plant products, grains, vegetables, fruits, and nuts, and eggs, you're a ovo yeah, vegetarian. Ovo, ovo, yeah. If you eat dairy products and grains, vegetables, fruits, and nuts, you're a lacto. lacto and then lacto if you eat eggs and dairy, yeah. you're ovo yeah. lacto vegetarian. Yeah. And there's many of those, and they can do very, very well, but they still have to supplement with minerals. Mm -hmm. Plants don't make minerals, and as we saw in that USDA database, the vitamins and minerals are going down in our foods because the farmers aren't fertilizing properly Depleting anymore. Depleting the soils. That's right. That's right. And so the plants can make things that come from carbon dioxide in the air, such mm -hmm. as the vitamins, amino acids, fatty acids, and they can make the phytonutrients and the antioxidants, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, we are talking about the B vitamins, mm -hmm. and traditionally people think of B vitamins coming from grain, especially the bran part of the grain, mm -hmm. but there's a certain amount of B vitamins in certain green leafy vegetables, yeah. sure. especially B2, B5, B6, a little bit of B1, but that's where the whole grains and the plants can make them because all the B vitamins, yeah. with the exception of B12, are all totally carbon compounds. Yeah. Plants can make yeah. them. Yeah, plants can make it. The bran layers of grains really contain or a lot the B, of it. Yeah, yeah the yeah, B vitamins. Yeah. Okay, and of course, you can prevent and cure beriberi, mm -hmm. which uh, gives you congestive heart failure, That's right. uh, which causes death. And then there's uh, pellagra, which is caused by a deficiency of uh, niacin or vitamin B3. Mm -hmm. And any doctor who would deny that you can prevent and cure beriberi and pellagra with vitamin B1 and vitamin B3 is, is silly, right? Yeah, or yeah, ignorant. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They learned that it was the bran and the rice. So it was actually a Japanese yeah. naval surgeon who yeah, discovered right. that in the 1700s. And uh, he saw these chickens rolling around. They're eating white rice, and the chickens are flopping around. Yeah. It looked like beriberi in, uh, in human beings. So he took the bran that they had polished the rice and took right. the bran off, threw the bran to the chickens. The chickens ate the bran. They and were healthy. Berry, berry went away. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's talk about bioflavonoids. Actually, I believe that uh, this is going to be considered an essential nutrient before long. I think uh, so. Yeah, bioflavonoids. Yeah. You and I have known about them for a long time. And bioflavonoids, again, are carbon compounds made by all vegetables and fruit and nuts and grains in various degrees and various types. There's hundreds of different types of bioflavonoids. And they're antioxidants. They protect us from free radicals. Right. And would, they reduce would, the risk of cancer. Vitamin K and K3 would be considered a flavonoid, right? Probably. Yeah, and B2 is yeah, a flavonoid. B2, yeah, B2 is a flavonoid. And so if they you coagulate have some, the blood properly yeah, and everything. Yeah, and, and they prevent anemia. Yes, right. Okay, like B2 prevents certain anemias. And if you have one bioflavonoid or two bioflavonoids that are considered vitamins, why not yeah. the others, yeah. right? Because you get diseases without yeah. them. You get, for instance really high levels of bioflavonoids in dark berries, cherries, green tea, the catechins, the EGCGs, mm -hmm. these are bioflavonoids, are mm -hmm. significantly reducing cancer risk, and of course, are found in most fruits and veggies. And the one that I love is the catechins. Catechins, or EGCGs, reduce the risk of lung and breast cancer significantly, prostate cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, and are found in dark berries, cherries, and green tea. Mm -hmm. In fact, the University of Colorado just two years ago came out and said that 
consuming dark berries every day will reduce the risk of colon and rectal cancer, yeah. colorectal cancer, yeah. by 60 to 80 percent. And that's something. That's amazing. Are there any drugs that will reduce the risk of colorectal cancer by 1 percent? I don't think no. so. No. I don't think not, so. Not one. You know, Joe, there's never been a drug or medication given to anybody for any specific condition that doesn't have some kind of a side effect on some other part of your body. That's exactly right. Well, Maybe. there might be one teeny weeny little good thing in 99 bad ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the way I look at it. Listen, stay with natural foods. That's what I'm telling you. Everything is natural. If you want to be natural, stay natural. And green tea, that's another one that has a lot of these catechins yeah, and does. EGCGs known for significantly reducing the risk of breast cancer, prostate yeah. cancer, colon cancer. Yeah, we use green tea at home. Okay, I love this one. Lutines. Lutines. Mm-hmm. are found in yellow vegetables, are found in spinach, another one of your favorites. Yeah. The lutines have been shown to reduce the risk of and can actually in the early stages cure cataracts mm-hmm. and macular degeneration. Mm-hmm. I've literally seen people who are blind. They couldn't read the newspaper. They got their driver's licenses taken away. We give them large doses of lutines and lycopenes from juices, and guess what? Yeah. They get their vision back. They can yep. read the newspaper. Yep. They go back. Even in their 80s where they're yep. blind, they've been legally blind for My 10 years. My agent up, right? Your agent yeah, up. That's right. And uh, the oldest one we worked with, with the lutines and lycopenes for macular degeneration, is 94 years old. Wow. 94 years that's old. That's pretty good, Joe. Yep. That's pretty good. And, of course, you said it, too, that the tomatoes, when you cook them, like make tomato sauces or juice them, you get more of the lycopenes. And, of course, lycopenes are found in tomatoes, pink grapefruit, another one of your favorites, watermelon. You're big on watermelon. Yeah. And it reduces the risk of prostate cancer, lung cancer. And so why wouldn't somebody juice, if nothing else, just for the lutines and the lycopenes? Now, in recent days and years, there's all these exotic juices out there. These are exotic juices. We've all heard of them. And there's all these wonderful things out there, testimonies after testimonies, telling about the wondrous things that happen with these exotic juices. Some of them I never heard of until the last five years. Mm -hmm. Uh, You may have because you travel around the world. And if anybody knew about a juice, you did. And one of them, actually three of them are interesting to me. One is acai berry, acai berry. And acai berry comes from Brazil. I was going to say tropical berry. Yeah, it's a tropical berry. Yeah. And it actually looks like a little cherry tomato. It doesn't look like what you would think of as a raspberry or anything like that. It looks like a little cherry tomato or maybe even a little chili pepper. Red is very sweet. Originated from Brazil. And this acai berry is 20 times stronger than red wine when it comes to the anthocyanins, anthocyanins, proanthocyanins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The resveratrols, things we know the grape cure is involved with. Well, the acai berry has 20 times the strength of those antioxidants. 20 times more powerful. More powerful wow, than the grape. that's great. And this has just been recently discovered in Brazil. Terrific antioxidant, the acai berry. I like the taste straight. I don't like to sweeten it with anything. Again, tremendous testimonies coming out on the value of the acai berry. Then there's the, I guess we can go back even earlier than that, aloe vera. Oh, people yeah. have been an aloe vera oh, yeah. plant, yeah. which has the monosaccharides and oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. People use it for burns yeah. and so forth. Have you ever juiced aloe? I've done it before, mm-hmm. yeah. I've done it with the whole, whole leaf and all, yeah, the whole thing. It's really nice. Comes out kind of thick, but you have to follow it up. Like when I do aloe vera, I have to put the aloe vera stalk in there, whatever, mm-hmm. and push it in. And then I run a couple of carrots right behind it okay. to wash it out. Otherwise, it's like a gel. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to get and that gel do, out of you there. you put that heavy green skin oh, goes sure, right in sure, there? Oh, sure, sure, okay. sure. The juicer will rip it open mm-hmm. and extract what it can. Do. That's where the juicy part is. The mm-hmm. gel is in the center part mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. aloe vera. Great stomach healer. I would venture to say it probably has properties in it very similar to cabbage mm-hmm. that will heal a stomach ulcer. I'll bet you anything that will heal lesions in the stomach. And, oh yeah, and, it's a great detoxifier of the gastrointestinal system of the body. Herbalists say the blood and the yeah, liver yeah, and the colon. Yeah. It's good for constipation. It's that's good for what burns. I was, I was just going to mention that. You show me somebody that's constipated and I'll show you somebody that is becoming sicker and sicker by the moment. They used to say, just before you and I were born in the old days, they used to say that uh, all disease begins in the colon. The colon, exactly. And if you're constipated, you have diarrhea, That's something, right. there's something That's happening right. there. Okay, That's let's talk about noni juice. From Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii from yeah, Tahiti. Yeah. Noni, I think, probably was the first of the exotic fruit juices and berry juices to really hit the market. And there's so many, again, testimonies. We love noni juice. It's just a great juice in of itself. We like to add the minerals to it. 
Okay, Noni Juice is great. I mean, there have been testimonies for at least 12, 15 years that I know about Noni Juice. And so that's kind of exciting. And uh, the anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant. Everything you can think of is said about Noni, and everybody loves it. Yeah, it'll keep you from having colorectal problems. That's one of the best things for it. What a concept. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay, then let's look at another big one called the goji berry. The goji berry, also known as wolfberry, you may have heard of it as wolfberry. Okay. The goji berry, wolfberry, came from Tibet and all through now Central Asia and India and, and grown all over the place. And goji berry goes back to ancient Chinese traditional medicine, certainly used before written history. And it just, again, has enormous number of testimonies because of the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant yeah, yeah. properties. We've talked about aloe vera. We've talked about the acai berry. We've talked about the noni, goji. talked about goji. And now we're going to talk about the mangosteen. The mangosteen is a fruit. And the mangosteen fruit actually comes from Thailand. It's known for a long time in Ayurvedic medicine from India. And it now is grown in Hawaii, the Dominican Republic. So we have a constant flow and source of the mangosteen fruit. And the testimonies coming from mangosteen are just like thousands and thousands of testimonies because the juice from this fruit actually acts like a COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitor. Eliminates pain almost instantly. It gives you the same pain-killing effect as Vioxx without all the negative side effects really? of Vioxx. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The substances in the mangosteen plant is the same as it is in the goji berry. They're called xanthones. Yeah. There's over 210 xanthones known. 40 of them are found in the mangosteen plant by itself. And so the mangosteen and the goji have this xanthone in them. And these xanthones are being very heavily studied right now, again, because of the power to be a COX-1, COX-2 inhibitor, almost immediately eliminate pain. The pain relief lasts for a long time. Also, significant anti-inflammatory properties so that people who have blocked arteries can take that and find actually their arteries get cleaned out. People who have cancer take this. Wow, and that's great. Because the anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidant properties, there's all kinds of testimonies saying they just get cured now. Yeah, Joel, are they available here on the American market? Oh, absolutely. They are, all right. Absolutely. It's a great thing to know. Okay, now I want to talk about minerals. What minerals can the plants make? None. None. Plants cannot manufacture minerals. And so there's three things I think that we have to supplement. If we're going to juice, there's still three things we have to supplement with. Number one, we have to supplement with minerals. And if you're going to supplement with minerals, you might as well supplement with organic plant-derived minerals. I'm just going to sort of summarize now. Plants can take the sun's energy, a process known as photosynthesis, through the chlorophyll in the plant Mm -hmm. and manufacture vitamins, manufacture the amino acids, the fatty acids, and phytonutrients, which they use themselves, and also the antioxidants, all of Mm -hmm. which are carbon compounds. Mm -hmm. But plants cannot manufacture minerals, and as you so eloquently say over and over and over, plants have to have the root down in the ground. They pull the minerals up. But it's a throw of the dice today, Jay, how many minerals are in the soil. And because we don't fertilize the way we did. Yeah, that's, that's our problem today. Yeah, 100 years ago when we were still, in fact, 50 years ago, we were still putting wood ashes from our heating and cooking fires into the soil. That's yeah. how we returned yeah. the minerals into yeah. the soil. And so we have to consciously supplement with minerals. And if you're going to do it, I like the plant-derived organic minerals gives you all the known essential minerals. I like to add some what we call a colloidal chelate calcium so that we get more calcium. We need a lot of calcium. We need 2,000 milligrams a day of calcium, so we need to put a lot of calcium into the juice. And then the omega-3s. If you're just juicing carrots and spinach and things like that, you're not going to get enough omega-3s because it comes from the germ of the grain. It comes from things like evening primrose, which is a nice little flower, beautiful little seeds, and you get the flaxseed oil and so forth. And so... So we can get some from, like, sunflower seeds and things like that. Yeah, exactly, sunflower seeds. And so we have to supplement in some form or another with these organic sources of minerals, organic sources of omega-3s, and organic calcium. And we just love to do that. We put those into our juices, or you can just supplement with the capsules, whatever works best for you. Are the liquids. We like the liquids. It goes along with the juices. Sure, it's easy to sure, mix in the juices. Sure. Yeah. There are certain plants that are famous for certain minerals. For instance, the cruciferous vegetables, things like 
broccoli are supposed to be good for calcium. Yeah. But if there's no calcium in the soil it's grown in, exactly. it's not in the broccoli. Uh, yeah, it'll be deficient. It'll be you know? deficient yeah. because the broccoli doesn't need that much. Yeah. And one of my favorites is the Brazil nut. It says it's good for yeah. selenium, yeah. the trace mineral selenium. And I ate about four of them last night. That's very good. Yeah, but yeah. What if those... They're hard to get out. I want you to know. Oh, Even out of the, the shell. Cracker, yeah, oh, out of the my shell. goodness. Oh, out of the shell. I'm glad the machine does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the Brazil nut tree doesn't need selenium. And so when they moved them into California and so forth, a lot of the Brazil nuts come from California, not Brazil anymore. And so if there's no selenium in the soil that the Brazil nut tree is growing in, how much selenium is in that Brazil nut? Yeah. Zero. Zero. And so even though you're following what might be good advice to get minerals from the juices, you still want to supplement. You yeah. still want to supplement that's kind of insurance. Yeah, good idea. If you're intelligent enough to juice, you're intelligent enough to know that you do have to supplement the juice sure. a little bit with the minerals, the omega-3, and some extra calcium. And again, we like the liquids. Uh, simply, it's easy to mix in the juices. goes very well with the juices. They come from this ancient compost yeah. pile, these yeah. 77 plant minerals. They're organic. We just love them. And again, the organic omega-3s and the colloidal chelate calcium, you just add it to your juices. Yeah, that's what we do at home. We do a lot of our green powders and mix it in our juices after we make the fresh juices because the live fresh juices that we just extracted is totally full of enzymes. It's very active. Mm -hmm. So when you put the green powders in, it's going to really take those green powders and make them really work for you with the B-complex. Make them more valuable. Absolutely. Okay, so, more usable. Okay, so even you, Jay Cordish, yep. knows that you have to supplement the live juices with some other things. Absolutely. Because we don't juice blue-green algae and spirulina, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can add those Absolutely. to your juices. With all that said, Jay, what I want you to do is give us 10 of your most favorite juice combinations. Well, that should be pretty easy. Your key organ of your body, in my estimation, is your liver. Okay. Everyone that's ever had something wrong with the body, especially cancer, has something wrong with the liver. And my great drink for that is my apple and beets. Okay. Now you can do carrot, beet, and cucumber. You can do several other combinations, but apple, beet, 50-50. Oh, what a drink. Okay. And that'll stimulate your liver and get all the pus and the fat and the debris and the waste matter out of that liver. It even sounds yucky. Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you, all the food factors after your body's digested, whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, all of it has to go through the ileocecal canal valve and it enters the liver. The liver has first shot at practically all the nutrients and mm -hmm. sends the rest of the bloodstream and you are nurtured that way. But that's one of my best drinks of all. And I love that drink. I love that drink. And then when, I, when I'm working out, I'm playing a lot of racquetball. I, I was playing a guy the other day down in Texas when we went down to Texas. Mm -hmm. Remember, Joel? Mm -hmm. yep, I saw yep. you down there lecturing. And I went down there and I played a little racquetball. And the guy was 23. And uh, here I am, 84. And um, we played three games and I won two out of three of them. And they were all yeah. three close. But yeah. that's a pretty good feeling. Okay, but, number two. What uh, is your favorite juice number two? Apple celery. Apple celery. Apple celery, you'll sleep like a baby. It's your nerve tonic, one of the greatest nerve drinks in the world. All you need is one, yeah, it's a sedative. Relax. Like, yeah. Apple celery. Apple celery. It's one of the greatest potassium magnesium drinks in the world, and it's a great drink to keep you from having muscle cramps. Say you guys are working hard and you have a muscle tetanus, which is a muscle mm -hmm. cramp. Apple celery, one rib of celery with two apples, one rib of celery with two more apples in that proportion. Perfect drink. Now, there's another drink that I love, and that is carrot, beet, and cucumber. Okay. That's Dr. Walker's drink that he okay. taught me about, you know. Another fantastic drink is to keep the bowels moving regular. Take spinach raw, wash it off good. Try to get organic, run it through the juicer and about a whole handful and run about four or five carrots in. That stimulates the peristaltic wave to keep you regulated because constipation is a real downfall to all of us. All disease begins in the colon. It begins in the Number colon. Number five. Number five, yeah. To keep my alkalinity, I like the cabbage juice. And I mix it with a variety of different drinks. Cabbage, carrot, and celery. That's one of my drinks. And that is to keep the body in a good alkaline balance so you don't have to hyperacidity, you see? Mm -hmm. There's another drink that I love, especially all you guys that play ball, all you football players and sprinters and track guys and everything else, and that is pineapple juice. Pineapple has bromelain mm -hmm. that takes the swelling and the pain out of the joints. And I like to mix a grapefruit with it, so that's another combination I like to take. Grapefruit pineapple. Grapefruit pineapple, one of the great drinks. Orange pineapple tastes better, but mm -hmm. grapefruit pineapple is a great drink for people that have... 
Um, pink grapefruit's pretty good. But pink grapefruit's fine, yeah. yeah. That's sweeter. Mm -hmm. but, but let me tell you, it's great for the joints. It's great for people that have inflammation. A lot of times when my knees are bothering me, because mm -hmm. I still play a little ball, but when my knees are bothering me, because I have one knee that's lost all the cartilage, I keep the pain to a minimum by grapefruit, pineapple, mm -hmm. the bromelain. Yeah, the bromelain reduces the inflammation. Inflammation, yeah. and all the pineapple factors are really, really help. Now, orange and pineapple. And when I do oranges, all I want you to do is peel the coloring of an orange off. Save the white, because if you learn to utilize the white and save it, it's going to save your life. It'll keep you from having a brain hemorrhage in your latter years of your life. Loaded with bioflavonoids. Bioflavonoids, strengthen the capillaries and blood vessels. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Something like that can be worked on. That's a great combination. Then I like to do for the beta carotene, one of the great drinks, and I think you can get it year-round, especially in Southern California, cantaloupe juice. Mm -hmm. And when I do cantaloupe, it's not just eating the orange edible part. You scoop out the seeds and you clean that outside skin to get the pesticides off. Oh, and let me explain something to you, how to remove pesticides. Very simple. Take your sink, plug it up, block it up. Cold water, fill it about halfway full. Take four tablespoons of regular table salt, okay? That'll kill fungus and bacteria. Mm -hmm. Then you take a fresh lemon, cut it in half, and squeeze that lemon in that salt. Right away, you have made a diluted form of hydrochloric acid. Now you soak your vegetables in there, you soak your fruit in there, especially grapes that have been sprayed pretty heavily, spinach and parsley and anything you're using, and soak it in there for a couple minutes, you know, not too long, a couple minutes, then rinse it thoroughly. You will have removed all the DDT, the arsenic, the cyanide, the parathine, malathion, and all the pesticides they have added to it. That's a good cleanser, and it's a good disinfectant, too. Well, here's something you can do on the road. Okay. Following in exactly what you said, I love that lemon oil, you know, from yeah, the lemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife, when I go on the road, she always sends me with grapes and nuts. She always sends me yeah. a bottle of grapes and a bottle of nuts. She washes them. Before she started washing them, I'd have to eat those grapes within two or three days because they get moldy. Yeah, they did, yeah. In, in a bottle, they get moldy. You know, the room temperature, they're wet and, and, and moist. they shrivel up. They shrivel up, yeah. they get moldy, get soft, and I have to throw half of them away. Yeah. Well, she started using the aromatherapy essential oil, uh -huh. lemon, uh -huh. the lemon oil, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and she put 10 drops per quart of water in a big mixing bowl, and she'd rinse those grapes four or five times, and then she'd put those 10 drops of the lemon Lemon oil, extract. Lemon extract, yeah. which is the essential oils, the aromatherapy essential oils, and she'd leave that sit for 30 minutes, and then she'd rinse it again. Yeah. Now, I went two weeks over and over and over again, and not a single one of those grapes gets soft, not a single one of them get moldy, and they didn't yeah. spoil at yeah, all. Yeah, that's true. Because the lemon oil is so anti-fungus and anti-yeast and anti-bacteria, it prevents all that decomposition. What a great way to clean the fruits and vegetables. So I'm glad you brought that oh, up. Oh, that's a great way to clean fruits. It's a simple thing. And I'm very, very happy that you talked about the lemon peel because one of my greatest thirst-quenching drinks of all time of course, in the summer, in the heat of summer, it's especially tasty. Take a lemon, cut it in half, use the skin and all, run it through there, then add about half of a lemon with the skin and all, because you're going to get your flavonoids in there, you're going to get your B-complex in the white pulpy part and all that. You're going to have a very strong lemony flavor to it. Then you add four apples inside the juice machine and extract it. So there's my world-famous lemonade, a half of a lemon with the skin. I used to just do the peeling, but I do the whole thing now. That lemon juice is so terrific. The apple juice becomes the watery part and the apple sugar becomes the sweetener. You don't need anything else. A half a lemon with about four or five apples depending on the size of the apple. There's the greatest lemonade you've ever had in your life. And if you have kids around and it's hot and it's the heat of the summer, make that drink then add some crushed ice or, or ice cubes to it. Swirl it around and let them just sip on it. They'll love it. That's the greatest thirst quencher of all time. Lemon aid with apple. Just all it is is lemon with apple. Magnificent drink. My Christmas cocktail is great. That's a bunch of grapes. Hopefully better to use the black grapes, the Rabir grapes. Make sure they're organic or at least get the pesticides off by soak them in that salt water and lemon and then rinsing. A bunch of grapes, the stems and seeds and all. But before you put grapes in there, take a piece of lemon, the outside skin and the white pulp, maybe about a one inch to two inch slice of lemon peel okay. with the white. Add it right with the grapes. Take the plunger and the pusher and push down those grapes. Then add two or three apples. That's my Christmas cocktail. And the way I do it usually is use a, a red apple with green grapes. That's Christmassy, right? <laughs> That's or, Christmassy. Yeah. or I use uh, 
the dark grapes, the, the Revere, concords. the Concords. Well, mm -hmm. Concords are special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't find them all the time. But the Concords are the greatest grape in the world. But I use the Ryber grapes. They are great with the lemon slice. So you got purple grapes, you got that lemon color, and then you add the red apple. Oh, mm. Christmas cocktail. What I'd like to ask you, Jane, if you had to give advice to somebody who is now convinced after listening to this, our discourse tapes, yeah, here, yeah. our dialogue, and they're convinced that they have to juice, they have to eat more plant life, they have to eat the things that give us life, the plants. Sure. What would be your advice to them? In a nutshell, what would you tell them to do? Let's say they're 18 years old, they're 25 years old, oh, they're 40 years old, yeah. they're 50 years old, they're 65 years old. They've never juiced before. Never. They don't like vegetables. All they do is eat meat and potatoes and fried yeah, potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a so, lot, there are people in yeah, that category well, too. You know, 80 of Americans yeah, are that. Yeah, way. yeah. So I, would I would say advice? right now, you eat your salad. You have a lot of fresh fruits, and that's what I do. So you eat the, without juicing. You eat these sure. salads. Okay. Great salads. I love salads. I put a lot of things in my salads. I, I'll even shred up green cabbage and red cabbage. Yeah, we and, ate dinner in. Yeah. Austin, Texas, yeah, and remember? you and Linda both had salads. Yeah, that's right. That's basically what I do. How many bushels yeah, of well, vegetables? You're supposed to eat from 4 to 12 pounds of green and yellow vegetables and plant life daily. There's no way we have the room in the small cavity of our stomach to hold that much. And even when you do, most of the food is still locked in the fibrous walls. If you don't chew 40, 50, 60 times... And nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. You yeah. see? So 100%. what you're saying is using the juicer... You're pre-digesting your food. Exactly, exactly. Then you eat for eating's sake. Mm -hmm. Then you eat because you like something. <laughs> you like the taste of something. Yeah, it's a social event. That's right. I'm a great eater of fruit. I love cantaloupe right now, mm -hmm. watermelon right now, you know? You know what I like is a big scoop of homemade vanilla ice cream and a half a cantaloupe. Yeah, that we, would be we, great. We love uh, yeah. sugar-free ice cream. Oh, that's great. We make yeah. sugar-free ice cream, and I like cinnamon on it, the vanilla, and I put that on my cantaloupe. Oh, uh, yeah, cantaloupe. Uh, my mouth is watering right now. There's your vitamin A right mm -hmm. there, you know. Beta-carotene, yeah, vitamin A. carotene is right there. But anyway, just be natural. How can you lose? God put these foods on planet Earth for us to partake in. That's the way to sustain a healthy lifestyle, to be vital and with energy and stamina and to be able to think clearly all your born days. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, what an accomplishment for you and your family. So go for it. Dr. Wallach is showing you the way. I'm here to help, okay? <laughs> well, you're the guy, let me tell you, So Jay. get with it, just stay with it. It's easy, it's not that hard. You gotta be a little disciplined, of course, but once you get on a little bit of a roll, it's easy. After 21 days, it's a habit. Oh, it's automatic. Yeah. It's After automatic. 21 days, it's, that's what the experts say. If you start something new, if you do it every day for 21 days, it becomes a habit. You just, suddenly you feel naked if you don't do it you anymore. You don't do it, right? right. And so that's great advice to give to people who are starting out in juicing. And again, you do approve of dried juices for flying and going oh, to places. Sure, and sure. You add them to your juices. A lot of times, Joe, a lot of times you don't have a juicer available. Mm -hmm. You're on a plane, you're driving a long distance. Boy, it's nice to have these supplements coming in. It's wow. simple. Well, thank you so very much, Jay. As usual, you're on top of it. You're batting a 1,000. For a guy 84 years old now, you've been juicing for 52 years. We really appreciate you bringing us up to date and sharing with us the fact that we actually have to have options. When you can't take your juicer with you, you do have to have access to powdered juices from plants, from vegetables, from fruit. You have to have some of the bottled exotic juices with you. You have to know what you're doing. And we really appreciate you sharing what you and your family do yourself and how people can live to be 100 in a very healthful way. And I know that people wanted to hear from you the fact that you have to supplement your juicing because plants cannot manufacture minerals. You must know this piece of information. And coming from you, I know that people who are really, really connoisseurs and supporters of juicing will take that information from you more than they could from anybody else. And when Jay Corey says it, and he says it about juicing, it's got to be true. Hey, all you Dr. Wallach supporters and Longevity fans out there. Most of you at some point will have come up against this NutraSmart bashing of Dr. Wallach. There are a few articles that are published specifically to tarnish Dr. Wallach and his message. And I have actually written this whole book. This was a few years ago. I wrote a full-length book in rebuttal to these 
vicious attacks on Dr. Wallach. I believe every objection that you are going to encounter in the field is addressed in this book. It's absolutely a great resource for you to have as a distributor. And if you do ever have anybody coming up to you saying, I heard what you said about Dr. Wallach and I was going to look into some of his vitamins, but you know, I came up against this article on the internet. NutraSmart article is probably the one they read. So it's a great deal, guys. I put it up very cheap. It's just another tool in our toolbox. And the Amazon link is in the description of this video. Make sure to check out our food YouTube channel called Notice Foods. This is 100% Dr. Wallach approved. And the chef that is preparing the food here and teaching you how to follow Dr. Wallach's food guidelines and Dr. Glidden's food guidelines. He is an industry professional over 22 years experience and a college diploma to back it up. And we do have experienced cooks and bakers as well working on content for the YouTube channel Notice Foods and the Instagram channel Notice Foods. It's 100% gluten free oil free, all the stuff about burning fats and all of the rules that, that you would need to know or follow. We're here to teach it to you here, as well as give you tons of ideas for recipes, individual dishes and meals. Of course, in the near future, we do have a cookbook coming out. Stay tuned for it. And if you'd like to talk to us directly, you can call us. Actually, you can call Judy. She's downriver Detroit. You can call from anywhere in the US, Canada, Mexico, UK, Australia, New Zealand, any other country you want to email us or send us a dm on whatever app that you want to contact us on instagram is super convenient for us and that's for any sales or product information in those countries or any distributor information 